Is that fixed or can at the bottom? So let's look at it. So it's, we're going to draw the shear moment diagrams for this frame. So what we've got here is this is going to be a pin connection today. And this is, this is fixed here at B, and then this is going to be a roller. So we're going to have two unknowns and one. So you should be able to find the reactions to get started without the problems. And you will have to separate it here at B and find the shear and moment at the top of AB and then the shear and moment at the beginning of BC. And we'll do that first. Like most of the time, our strategy will be to um, get as much as we can. And in this case, we can draw a single free body for the whole structure. Um, I won't redraw it. I'll, I'll just kind of cheat and use the, uh, the frame. So I'll just go ahead and assume that I have a reaction in the y direction, a reaction in the x direction, and then over here at C, I'll assume I have a reaction up. To do my uh, statics and make sure that this free body is in equilibrium, I'm going to resolve my distributed load into a uh, concentrated equivalent force, which will be the equivalent to the area under the curve, and that curve, our loading curve is a rectangle, so it's just going to be base times height, so it looks like it's 10 feet long, 4 kips per foot, so that's going to be a force of 40 kips, and it'll be located at the center of this area, the center of this area, which will be halfway, and half of 10 is 5 feet from either end. So now um, I can check the equilibrium of this whole structure. So probably the easiest thing to do first would be to sum the moments at A. That's our pin. That's been our strategy the whole semester. The reason we do that, remember, is there's two unknowns at the pin, so we know those will both be concurrent there, so they won't create any moment. So I only have one unknown will be CY. So with right-hand rules, my sign convention, all these forces create what kind of moment about A, positive or negative? negative? Negative. So we'll just start from the bottom here. So the first one will be uh, 10 kips with a moment arm of 4 feet. The next one will be 15 kips with a moment arm of 8 feet. And then there's our 40 kip concentrated uh, equivalent force. And it has a moment arm of five feet. So the only thing remaining is the reaction at CY. What kind of moment does it create? Positive. And what's its moment arm? Ten. So you should be able to solve for CY. Thirty-six. And it's positive. 36 kips up. Okay, now we can sum forces in the y direction and make sure we're in equilibrium with the vertical components. So looking here, we got AY is acting up. Uh, CY is also acting up. The only other Y component is our concentrated equivalent going down. So it looks like uh, AY four is 4. And then we can sum forces in the X direction. You might remember in a lot of our beam problems, this is typically uh, results in zero, but not in the frame problems, it typically does not result in a zero component. So in this case, I have AX to the right, and also a 10 kip and a 15 kip also to the right. So we'll add those up because we are summing forces. And then you'll find that your AX force is opposite of what we assume, negative and equal to 25. So we got our reactions to start. So now what I need to do is uh, cut the structure at B and decide um, which of these two um, 
sections to work. Uh, we could do AB or BC. Uh, the way I'm looking at it now, I don't see a clear advantage to one or the other. Um, so, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to pick BC. Why not? So I'm going to cut it and look at section BC. And when you look at that free body diagram, let's put on there what I know. I know my CY value. What is it? 36 kips. I already know my concentrated equivalent force. It's 40 kips right in the middle. And now it's uh, my turn to decide what's happening at B. So I'm just going to assume that I have a BY force, a BX force, and uh, I'm going to assume this direction, just some moment. So I, I assumed here, I'm not doing shear force and bending moment, this is just a force, so that's my typical positive X force, my typical positive Y, and that's right hand rule moment. We'll come back and sort that out. So we can do that now if you'd like. So I will now sum moments at B and make sure that we're in equilibrium. So with the right hand rule, that's my sign convention. At B, we know BX and BY don't create moment, right? They're concurrent there. So what kind of moment is MB the way I drew it? Positive. 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 What, the 40 kip force about B creates what kind of moment? Positive or negative? Negative. 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 So the force is 40 kips. The moment arm is 5 feet. What about the 36 kip force? Positive or negative? Positive. So 36 kips times, I forgot to write the dimension here, 10. I guess 5 plus 5 is 10. So we can solve for the moment at B. Uh, it looks like it's going to be what? 160? Huh? Yes. Negative? Negative. Okay. And now we can uh, sum forces in the y direction. Make sure that's in equilibrium. So in the y direction, I've got by acting up. This 40 kip is acting down. And this 36 kip is up. So it looks like my reaction BY is going to be 4. And then last, I will sum forces in the X direction, make sure in its equilibrium. It looks like all I have is... Uh, BX. So BX is zero. So now I have all the bits and pieces I need to draw my shear moment. Okay. Now before I do that, on the next page, I thought what I would do is just come over here and uh, redraw the beam just so we can see it. Hello, Mr. Purcell. So I've got a 36 kip force up here. We got BY was 4. And we have negative, which means the moment is in the opposite direction. And then, of course, we have a distributed load.
So that's going to be the basis of our shear force and bending moment diagram. What happens here on this element? So what do we solve there? We got an AY. Do we care about AY in, in section AB? We do not because it's going to be axial force. We're not drawing axial force diagram. We do care about AX. And AX was negative 25, so it's actually in this direction. What else do we have? We had right in the middle, we had a 10 kip force. And here we had a 15 kip force. So let's see, uh, if BY was up on BC, it's down on AB, but again, that would be an axial force. We don't, we don't care about that. Uh, BX was zero, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, we did assume it to be right, to the right, so on this free body, it would be to the left, but it's zero, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, we do have a moment that looks like this on this side, so it should be what? Opposite on the connecting part. So what I have now here is um, all the proper values we need for forces, which will be shear forces and moments, and then on AB, the same thing. Everybody see that? So before we go to the other page, let's talk about this for a second. What kind of bending moment is this on BC? Positive. What kind of shear force is this? Positive. What kind of shear force is this, Mr. Frizzell? Positive. No. <laughs> no it goes back to zero, right? No, it's, <laughs> it's negative. What about on this side? What kind of shear force is the 25? Positive. Positive. What kind of bending moment is this guy? Positive. Positive. Well, remember the way we're going to rotate. We're always going to assume the outside is going to be our positive side. So what I'm going to do is we're going to draw, we'll draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams now. Let me, uh, my, tape, my tape machine didn't work out right. So to, just to help you visualize this, we're going to we're going to draw this one in this form. But remember, this one in AB, we're going to rotate it. I'm going to draw it like this. So I'm just going to slide that off to the side a little bit and um, redraw that in that configuration. So if we start with AB, then it will look something like this. So there's my 10 kip and 15 kip forces. I have my reaction, which was uh, 25. Oh, not 35, 25. And those dimensions were four feet and four feet. And then next to it, I'll do BC, which I drew once before, but I'll redraw again. So there's that beam. And now we'll have 36 kip force up, 4 kip force down, oh I've left off some moments which will be important, and there's our distributed load which has the intensity of 4 kips per foot over 10 feet. And I forgot that we have a bending moment here of 160 kip feet and a bending moment here of 160 kip feet. So starting with AB, I will draw a template for the beginning and end of the beam. And we know something's going to change here. We know that the change in shear as we go from the left to the right side will be affected. So I'll uh, put that value there. And let's go ahead and uh, 
begins. So I'll draw a positive x-axis, positive shear. All my values will have units of kips. What is the shear force at A? Positive or negative? Positive. Let's, um, oh, here's interesting. What's the shear force at B? <laughs> I love it when you guys think. Huh? What do we find dx to be? Zero. 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 This one will be zero, Mr. Brazil. You don't like that, I can tell. <laughs> I, I did this intentionally because this force applied at B, it's kind of hard to know what to do with that. Right? Remember, all these dimensions are to the center line of the beam. So it's, it, it's a little tricky. Now, when I took it apart, um, we, we, we looked at it on this side, and we found that there was no required X component. And if you look at this in a second, watch what happens. We know that the change in shear is equal to what? The area of the load. What's the area of the load of the first four feet? Zero. Zero. So it stays 25. What is the uh, shape of the shear diagram? Well, the slope is equal to what? The load. And what is the load? Zero. So we get zero slope. Now, as we go from the left side to the right side, how much does the shear change? Uh, minus 10. So what's 25 minus 10? 15. It looks like you wrote a 35. I did, and then I wrote over it and made it a 2. A two. That's what confused me. I was like, Sorry. How, how do we get to... Zero? Here, I'll, I'll fix that. I'll just wipe that from memory, and I'll write 25 here. How's that? So this value is now 15. What's the change in shear? Uh, Equal to the load. The load is zero. zero, so it doesn't change. And then the slope? Slope's equal to the load. The load is zero. So what's the shear in B, A, B? At B. Answer says? 15. 15. I like the way you said that. It was so confident. 15. That was in what section, though? That was in... So what's the shear at the top of the beam, top of the column AB? Diagram says... Positive or negative? Positive. Is that confusing? Yes. Why? Well, I thought you just told us that it did. I said, well, I said it might be tricky. So when Is we it? took the 10 kibs and it pushed it down. No, there's no, there's no pushing down. Okay. When the 10 kibs... The change in the shear change. is equal to the applied load. So now, the shear say? does change when you transfer past the 15 and go into another body. But have, are we doing that? Yeah. No. Grumble, grumble, gripe, gripe, grumble, grumble, grumble. Hey, hey, take it up with the Germans. They made this all up in the late 1850s. It hasn't changed yet. Yeah. We have a lot of problems with Germany. This is not one of them. <laughs> okay, so if 
if B X, like the reaction B at X was not. That's the shear, that's the shear. Well, see, that's the force that's transferred onto B, on B C. And is there any shear? There is not any. So there's no axial force transferred to BC from that shear. Okay, that's... Yeah, it's kind of weird. So that's what the reaction force would be. If there was a reaction force, that would mean it transferred to BC. Well, I mean, I mean, we're following our rules. Does this look... If I construct this, does this look wrong? No. You guys just don't like this, do you? I'm okay. Oh, good. I'm glad someone likes it, since it's the heart of the course. That's good. That's good stuff. <laughs> so let's draw the moment diagram. What do you think the moment diagram is? It's going to start at zero. It's going to start at zero. I, now, I think we can all agree on that. Does anyone have a disagreement with that? I do not. Mr. Frizzell, are you happy with that? I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm yeah. glad. So we're going to start at? What do you think the bending moment at D is on the top of AB? Six. Positive or negative? Positive. <laughs> is this a positive bending moment the way we're drawing it or negative bending moment? Positive. 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 So what's the next thing? Change in moment is equal to the area under the shear diagram. What's the area under the shear diagram here? Right there, it's 100. 25 times 4 is 100. What is the slope of the moment diagram equal to? Positive. It's equal to positive? Yes. It's equal to the shear. What's the value of the shear? 25. And it is positive. So if someone asked you what is the slope of the moment diagram on the first four feet of AB, you would answer? 25. 25. What is the slope of the moment diagram on the uh, next four feet? 15. 15. Positive. Positive. This is not to scale. Oh, I already connected the dot, but 15 times 4 is 60, so it works out. So there's your moment diagram. Now what? I think that's a great idea. So there's my template for the beginning and end. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mark off positive x, positive shear, and we'll use units of kips for all these values. So what is the shear force at B on section BC? Is that positive or negative? Positive. And it is 4. What's the shear force on this end? That's a 36, by the way. Is that negative? Negative. So the change in shear is the area in the load diagram. What's the area of this load curve? It's a rectangle, base times height. 40, 40. And it's negative. 4 minus 40 is 36. That's good. And the, and the slope? Negative. Negative 4. So it looks something like that. So now what? Well, we have a spot where the shear crossed the axis, so that's going to be an important point, so I'll add that to the template. So now when we do our moment diagram, we'll need that point. How do we find that point? Well, the change in shear is equal to the area in the load diagram. What's the change in shear here? And what is the corresponding area under the load diagram? That would be, if you extend it up, would be, whoops, would be this little area right here. And let's just call that uh, x1. So what's that area? It's four times x1. Four times x1. And it's also negative. 
Set those two equal. What is x1 equal to? If you don't like doing it that way, th these are similar triangles. And you would say 4 is to x1 as 36 is to that. And those two things have to add up to 10. You could try it that way if you like. I, I, I like this way. So if this is 1, the other side then becomes 9. So what's our moment at, what's our bending moment at B? Positive or negative? So we start off at 160. So the change in moments, the area of the shear diagram. What's the area of the shear diagram right here? I know it's kind of small. It looks, yeah, one half base one times height four is two. And that's positive. So 60 plus two, I'm going to exaggerate this so we can see it, is 162. And then what's the slope? So we're going to start off with a positive slope, and we're going to end with a zero slope. So you get a little bit of a parabolic section there. And then over the last nine feet, what's the change in moment? Well, the change in moment's there in the shear diagram. What's there in this part of the shear diagram? Well, one half base nine times height 36. I bet it's 162. I bet it's 162. Is it? Someone bet me. It is. You win. It starts at a zero slope and ends up at a big negative slope, which I can't draw to scale here. And then I'll swag a curve. And there's your moment diagram. So then if one were to ask the question, what is the maximum moment in this frame, the answer would be positive or negative. Where is it located? One foot to the right of B. So uh, I would be prepared to answer said questions about said shear moment diagram. I would. I would. Any other questions? Besides Mr. Frizzell? He constantly has questions. Uh, I have a question. Oh, no. <laughs> Here we go. Are we going to do frames like this on the test, or is it just going to be the... No, I'm going to save those for the second test. Okay. <laughs>